Hi, Steve Queen here. Glad to share with you today uh, about a topic that is spelled out pretty clearly in the New Testament. Um, and it's a, it's a tough one, but a very important one in our relationship with Jesus. If we really wanna grow as disciples, as his followers, it's important that we understand this topic. And the topic is dying. It's not dying uh, in the physical sense, because that will happen to us once, but dying in the sense of leaving behind something for the sake of pursuing something that is far, far better. In Colossians chapter 3, Paul says, you died and your life is hid with Christ in God. So he's telling the Colossians, you died. Now let me ask you this, if you had died, is that something you think you would remember? Yeah, you would think so, that's kind of a big deal, dying. And Paul wasn't saying by the Holy Spirit something that was new to them. He wasn't saying, hey, when you did this or said that or whatever, you know what happened? You died. Can you believe it? You, you actually died. No, he's describing something. He's reminding them of something that was part of their walk with Christ. You know, Jesus said in the Gospels over and over and over and over the same basic message. Repent, believe, follow me. Repent, believe, follow me. Repentance is a turning away from something to something else. It's a turning. And the repentance that Jesus was looking for was turning away from any other gods, being your own God. These things are all sin. Turning away from anything other than wholeheartedly following the one true God who revealed himself to the nth degree, to the greatest degree in Jesus himself. Repentance in the Gospels and throughout the New Testament is a turning away, specifically turning away from anything that is sin, anything other than wholeheartedly with all you are following the one true God in his son Jesus. So repentance was turning away from everything that was not Jesus, believing he was the Messiah and ultimately resurrected, of course. As you see when they preach in the book of Acts, they start with the resurrection. So turn from everything that isn't Jesus, believe he is the resurrected son of God and follow him, repent, believe, follow. And so Paul was writing by the Holy Spirit to the Colossians, reminding them that you died. Remember guys, you died. What did they die to? Other gods being their own God, the ways of the world, the, uh, the priorities of the world around them. Why did he have to remind them? For the same reason that I need to be reminded and you need to be reminded because the world constantly pulls on us. The world, the flesh, the devil, we're, we're simply born into this war between light and darkness where we are pulled constantly. And so the only way we can combat that constant pull is with an absolute decision to die to the things that pull us. Now that's one part of it. But the key thing about repentance to remember is it's turning from and turning to. Turning from, turning to. So we died. We died to the world, the flesh, and the devil. We died to other gods and came alive to Jesus. We were buried with him. We died with Christ. We were buried with him in baptism and raised to resurrection life. So when Paul writes by the Spirit to the Colossians and he says, you died and your life is hid with Christ in God. That's the thing, you died and you're alive in Jesus now. Jesus is your life. And this is not unique to us. In Romans chapter six, you find that Jesus died to sin. 
Jesus died to sin. And in Hebrews, it says that he was tempted like us in every way, yet without sin. In Hebrews chapter 5, I believe it is, it talks about how he learned obedience from the things he suffered. Jesus felt the pull, just like me, just like you. And he had to die to his own humanity, his own flesh, being pulled in these different ways. He was tempted in every way, just like us, yet without sin. So Jesus himself had to die to sin, and we had to die to sin. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Because people were misunderstanding some aspects of the gospel in Romans chapter 6, and we're saying, well, well, we should, we should sin more so grace can abound more. Isn't this great, you know? Let's just let it all hang out. Let's just sin up a storm, as we say where I live. And, um, and then God's grace will be great. And won't that show how wonderful God is? That I sin, I sin a whole lot, and yet God still loves me. And God, um, God is, that's a misunderstanding of grace. His, His grace and mercy work together. When we, as followers of Jesus, do sin, 1 John 1, 9, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But that's to be the exception. Now, our experiences are all different. I get that. But the point of this very short video today is simply to say, Jesus Himself died to sin. We are called to die to sin. And like we see in Colossians 3, we have to be reminded that we died to sin. There's a great analogy to being a Jesus follower in the Bible, and it's marriage. I know when my wife and I got married, we made vows to each other. And I made a vow to forsake all other women and keep myself only to my wife. I've said to young men many times that for me, as a man, the simplest way that I learned long, long ago to keep my heart set on my wife, who I love very, very much, is that if there's another woman around and it's not my wife, then she's not for me. It doesn't matter what they look like or blah, 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 or anything else. Is it my wife? No, not for me. Because then you deal with it quickly. See, that's the thing. Long ago, I died by the grace of God, by His power at work in me, I died to all other women. And, this is key, I died to all other women and I am very much alive to my wife. Now, follow this closely because this is, this is where real life is lived, I'm telling you. For me, I do remind myself that I'm dead to these other women, but I don't stay there. That's a very quick thing. Nope, not for me. And I pour myself into my relationship with my wife. And my wife makes it very easy to do that because she's, she is lovely in every way. But my point is that Jesus put me in charge of my inner life under his lordship. So. This is just the reality of where we live as human beings. We have to count the cost. Like Jesus said in John chapter six, people wanted to follow him. He said, think about it. How many bricks do you need to build a wall? Don't just throw yourself into this. Don't fling yourself into being my follower. You know, really pay attention to the parable of the sower. Go read that if you haven't in a while. Um, everything's great with the seed. It's the soil, it's the difference. Well, my soil is in here. Your soil is in you. So what's the point? The point is, if we're going to truly begin as followers of Jesus and succeed as followers of Jesus, we have to recognize that just like Jesus, we must die to sin and remember that we've died to sin. We've died to everything that is not Jesus and following Him. And we are very much alive to Him. And if we will pour ourselves into being alive in Him and doing the things that grow and build our relationship with Him, the pull of sin, other gods, all that stuff will become less and less and less. And that's how we grow. Parting thought for me, we must embrace the battles that we're in. Embrace 
the struggle. It's worth it. It's not going away. I know plenty of believers who get very frustrated and, and almost seem to forsake following Jesus sometimes because of the constant pull of sin. It affects everyone. It affects me. The only healthy, sustainable way forward to build a life in Christ and with your people in your life that matter the most is to recognize it for what it is. Sure, I'm always going to feel pulled by the world, the flesh, and the devil. But Jesus and the people in my life closest to me are worth pressing on in Him. So, here's a reminder for you and for me. We have died to sin when we came to Jesus. If, if, we, if we heard the true gospel, that's part of it. Dead to that and alive in Him. Dead to that and alive in Him. And that is where victory is. So I want to invite you to go to livewickmedia.com. That's my website. And there's other videos there you can see there. Uh, you may be watching this on the Church Without Walls YouTube channel. Uh, many thanks to Church Without Walls. Uh, if you haven't been there, look it up online. Uh, fantastic people. We're part of that network and, and really thrilled to be. And uh, God bless you. And just embrace your death to sin and your life in Him because that's not going anywhere and that's the only way we're gonna win. God bless you, we'll see you next time, bye-bye.